Welcome to Story Chats at Inspi Romance. I'm Elizabeth Madry, and I'm here with my two co-hosts. I'm Narelle Atkins. And I'm Valerie Comer. Today we are this pretty. <laughs> she wants oh, She's her tail <laughs> is just beautiful. The way it flaps. She's your fan. She's decided she's gonna cool the room down with flapping her tail. <laughs> It's not working. It's very tasty up here. She's (laughs) eyeing the exits too. She's ready to go. (laughs) So today we are talking about CCR that is set in, um, it's a lot. Hold for, hold tight. Here we go. (laughs) Iowa, Missouri, North Dakota, South Dakota, and Nebraska. So that's five. And the primary reason behind that is because like North and South Dakota were really hard. (laughs) Um, so was Nebraska, honestly. Um, so I, I just kind of, they're all that sort of Midwest up there by Canada thing. Nebraska's so that's, not by Canada. Well, no, you're right. But it was Missouri. I'm anyway, I, I drew a circle around them and I'm like, they can all go together. And so that's what, that's what we're doing. <laughs> that I'll go with. That's a reason. Okay. <laughs> so, um. I think I was the only one when we were talking about it. I, I'm the only one with a Nebraska book, if I recall correctly. Um, mm-hmm. Even though we all have Nebraska books. Uh, do you have? I don't. We wrote Nebraska books. What Nebraska? Did we? Book? Oh, no, no. Sorry. See, I'm. I'm. <laughs> like, a... What book did I write in Nebraska? <laughs> <laughs> I don't I remember like, Nebraska. Oh, <laughs> Carry on. Kansas, I'm delusional. Kansas is a little further south. Nebraska. <laughs> uh, I'll blame funny. being a Canadian. I'll blame something. I'll blame the heat. I'll blame the cat. There you go. Cat. All of those things. All of, All those, of things. those things. So um, I guess maybe I'll just go ahead and start with Nebraska with my Nebraska book. Yeah. So I read It Will Be Forever by Jennifer Rodewald, um, mm. which is set in Nebraska. Uh, it is not super nebraska e, although I, like i don't know what would would make something super nebraska e. um it it's in a small little farming town um but it could be a small little farming town in any of those midwestern farming states and it would have been fine um and then in fact there's one the heroine had left town for college and gone to texas and so she flies home for the thanksgiving break and she flies into Denver. And I actually had to pull up a map because I'm like, she's going to Nebraska. But sure enough, Colorado does touch Nebraska. It, like, it is mm. a drive that is doable. So I'm like, oh, they're in this little southwest part of Nebraska, which like to me, you say Nebraska, I think Omaha. I don't like and then I think Mutual of Omaha. And then I think of the animal show that used to be on on Sunday nights right before the Disney movie of the week. And that's like that's what I know about Nebraska. <laughs> so, uh, and when you drive through it, there's a lot of wind farms. That's the other thing that I know. So um, anyway, uh, our heroine has left town for college um, as much to get an education as to get away from her self-destructive brother. Uh, her brother is going through this massive rebellion well, and has been, this. you have read this book? I have read this book. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's coming together now in my head. So in high school, he went through this massive rebellion, drinking, drugs, partying, bad stuff. And his parents, she always tried to cover for him to save him before it became an issue. Um, And so she is just done. So she leaves town. Um, She comes back for Thanksgiving, her senior year of college. Um, And the other reason she left town, which is her brother's best friend, joins them um and so I really enjoyed um with Jennifer Rodewald you get the heavy issues you get a lot of Jesus and you get really clear character growth that is fueled by spiritual development um and it has all of those things for for both of the characters um just it was really good if you want light and fluffy this is not not the book but (laughs) um (laughs) <laughs> but it also is not, it's not as heavy as many of her other books. So it is definitely lighter uh, for a Jennifer Rodewald book. But it was really good and I enjoyed it quite a, quite a lot. So, and Brother's Best Friend, 
is probably in my top 10 favorite tropes. Um, yep. Especially when it's an older brother and you got that older, you know, three, four year older boy who you crushed on when you were too young to be crushing on anyone. It's just, it's fun. But we did anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but we did anyway. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. Should we go to South Dakota next? Can we just well, go you, to the Dakota? the Dakotas? I have nothing in the Dakotas, so okay. I'm out for a while. <laughs> okay. Well, I, it, this is, area is the stomping grounds of author Jesse Gussman. Okay. Um, so she has multiple books series set in North and also in South. Okay. So I just um, chose Cowboy Walking Away. It's the story of Rose and Derek. Rose's husband wanted to put off having a family, um, then divorced her and married a woman with three kids, while Rose is still craving a family. Wow. Derek, on the other hand, had followed his wife to the city, but now returned after his divorce. So somehow they find they have a fake relationship to shield themselves from the town of Sweetwater. But as we know from romance novels, um, fate can become real. So could this have been set elsewhere? I'm sure it probably could have, but that's Jessie's where she lives. So it feels very authentic to that part of the world to me. Um, I've read quite a few of her books, nowhere near all of them because she's fast. Very prolific, yeah. Um, but this is book one in, I'm going to say a new series, but it's probably got 10 books in it already, like newer than some of her series. Yeah. And um, there's a bit of a, almost a bit of a historical vibe in it. It's mm. contemporary, it's modern day, but just some of the ways they interact a little bit. But um, but yeah, so you've got two divorced characters. So if that's if that's an issue, then this you don't want this one. <laughs> but but Jesse does it well, and and the character Rose her ex with his new wife are like literally throwing themselves in her face all the time which is why she came up with this fake relationship oh I'm dating it's getting serious like I'm fine don't I'm, I'm not pining over you anymore and then it's like oh but wait who who is the lucky guy that I just said it was I was serious with right right so, anyway that sounds fun Jessica Gussman yeah. cowboy walking away all right, so I have um, Country Blessings by Marilee Wren, and yeah. it is in South Dakota. Uh, this is a Hollywood starlet who returns to her parents, was her grandparents' farm, and then her parents, or at least her mom's farm. Uh, her mom now has passed, so she goes to back to South Dakota. Uh, her whole plan is just get everything ready to sell sell and go back to Hollywood like she has no interest in this place that she used to spend her summers growing up she is a single mom uh her daughter is six five six seven somewhere in I that read this book but it's been a while I okay. don't remember uh and the daughter absolutely loves it for the same reasons that the mother did growing up because it was, you know, there's horseback riding in a swimming pool and, you know, you can run and be free uh, out in the country more so than on the streets of LA. <laughs> shocking. Very, very yeah. shocking. Um, and so who should happen to still be there, but the somewhat older guy that she crushed on over the summers. Um, and he is a farmhand for the neighbor, uh, who was like her best friend kind of thing growing up. So, you know, we've got a, a second chance, um, definitely some fish out of water with this one, which is fun because it's harder to find true, like fish out of water. I feel like, um, you know, and you really do get that. Like she's, she is not where she is comfortable. <laughs> um, and, and so that's kind of fun too, uh, especially with, you know, you have the uncertainty of even if they do start something up, how can it last? Because he's as, he, he might as well have roots for as, as planted to that farm as he is. Um, and, and she's, her star is on the rise in Hollywood. So this is not the time to turn her back and disappear into nowhere um, because- South Dakota. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
So it's really good. And again, with Marilee, um, solid faith, um, which I always love to see. And then I also, for all that I am not sure that I've ever been to South Dakota, they've mentioned enough things that I know about South Dakota, like the Black Hills. Um, and they they did some little, because she's not from there, they took her daughter to do some of the big touristy South Dakota things. So I liked that aspect of it because it meant that it had it had to be there. It couldn't just be farming town in farming state. Um, you know, there was enough South Dakota tourism in there that I was like, this is kind of cool. It's like a little mini vacation on top of it. Cool. Yeah, I liked that. All right, let's move to Iowa. You got an Iowa, Narelle? I do have an Iowa. Yay! <laughs> I'm going to actually talk about something. Let me find it. So, and I, I suspect I'm not the only person that's going to go to this series or this author. That's so it. I'm going to Maple Valley, which is Melissa Tagg's series set in Iowa with the Walker family. And the one I'm going to talk about is From the Start. Now, did either of you guys pick this book? That was mine. Yep. So go ahead. Okay, all right. That's good because <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I read this book. I think it released in 2015. So That's I'm incredibly good. hazy on the details. Okay. So I'll give a very, a, a little opening bit and I'll send it over to Elizabeth <laughs> to finish. <laughs> So um, Kate's the heroine. Now, she's an Emmy Award-winning screenwriter. She's a romance author. I think she had one book out that didn't do brilliantly well. But she's in a bit of a career slump. We start in Chicago where she's um, the writer of a, a hallmarky type um, rom-com type movie, but she's really at a loose end with her career. And the hero is Colton. He's a former NFL quarterback who was in the prime of his career. He's living in LA, so he must be playing for an LA team, I assume. Um, he's injured. And the injury was kind of self-inflicted in the sense that he did something silly on the field during the game that meant that he was injured. So it's kind of like that awkward, that awkward, awkwardness of, well, I've stuffed my career and it wasn't just bad luck. It wasn't just being in the wrong place at the wrong time. I actually made a pretty dumb decision that has taken me out of the game. Like that sort of moment, that sort of two, like that sort of closing doors thing. It's like I took, I did the wrong thing. So he's in a really bad place. He's been in seedy bars, drinking too much. Um, his manager's beside himself because he's in such a bad way. And his best friend from college happens to be Kate's brother. So this is another brother's best friend. And so they, what happens in Maple Valley is this big tornado goes through at the beginning of the book. And so there's been a whole lot of damage and stuff. And so Kate ends up going back to Maple Valley, as does Colton. So I'm going to turn it over to Beth to talk more about it <laughs> um th those are the big there's also then a flood sort of later on like I don't want to live in Maple Valley <laughs> they have a lot of natural disasters <laughs> um, it doesn't seem like a a stable place as far as the weather goes yeah um but I I did Colton is fun because he he was like sort of self-destructive and he's trying to like his agent because he's out drinking uh, all the time, his agent is like, you know, you need to uh, lie low and avoid the tabloids if we're going to have any hope of salvaging any part of a career for you because football's out, but you have some celebrities. So let's try and salvage that. He has a book deal. Um, and that's what sort of draws him to Kate because Kate uh, could, could ghostwrite it for him. And so he spends some time getting her to agree to ghostwrite his book. Um, sort of like a memoir is the feeling I get. Um, and she is sort of biding time because she feels like everything she's written, all the rom-coms in the romance novel um, have been fluffy. And she, her, her mother told her to do something important with her life uh, before she passed and she hasn't, or she feels like she hasn't. And so she's trying to figure out how to do something important with her life. Um, it's interesting seeing the two of them come together. Um, it's a relationship that in real life, I wonder how long it would work. Um, but that's the beauty of fiction is you can just imagine that they figure it out. So, um, but it was, it was fun. It was good. Um, and it, I don't, other than like the tornado and the flood, I guess that makes it Iowa-y. Um, I don't know. 
<laughs> I don't want to live in Maple Valley. <laughs> <laughs> I know next to nothing about Iowa, so you could tell me anything, you could, and I'd probably believe you. <laughs> I don't really, I don't really either. So yeah, porn, lots of porn. <laughs> I think yes, I have read. I thought I had read that series, but I don't remember. That it's not sounding familiar, but it, you said it's a few years old. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Like my, yes. my, my brain may have seen it. I know. Probably. Well, my, I had. I it, I didn't remember it. I had I started rereading it because I I know I'd read it because my Kindle told me I'd read it. But do you think I? Could... <laughs> if my Kindle didn't tell me I read things, I probably wouldn't actually know that I've read right. it. So I'm so glad that's a feature. <laughs> Sometimes yes. Yeah. Sometimes yes. Yeah, so my Iowa um, story is also a series. So when you started talking, I'm like, it is the same one, but, but it wasn't. Um, I think the very first Joanne Durgan book okay. that I ever read was uh, "Meet Me Under the Mistletoe," and it is set in Star Starlight, Iowa. Yeah, she has a whole Christmas series. There's four books in it, and I adored "Meet Me Under the Mistletoe." Yes. So. It will have come out in something like 2012 or 2013, and it has probably been that long since I read it. But I immediately went, oh, I have read something in Iowa, and I'm sure that's a Joanne Durgan. So um, it's a really cute, sweet series. Uh, Starlight is a, a Christmas town where they do everything up in a big way, and the four stories all link together. And if you are ready for Christmas romances already, now, this time of year, check them out. And if not, put them on your list for later this fall. Because if you haven't read them, you should. You'll like them. They're, that's the one they have, like, sleigh rides and stuff, right? Yeah. It, yeah. All the stuff. Yeah, it's Aww. a good series. All the, all the winter Christmas st ice skating sleigh rides, all the good stuff. Those are fun. Yeah. It's, I'd forgotten that that was in Iowa, but yeah. All of all the, all the Christmas tropes that we love yeah. um, are in uh -huh. there. Yeah. It always does a good faith arc as well. So yes. you've got that too. Yep. Love it. All right. So now we are at Missouri. Norelle, you want to go first? I will. So I've got a nostalgia read, what I call a nostalgia read, which means that I'm talking about a book that was published originally in 2020 in the US and by the spine of the book, May 20, no, May 20, 2000, I should say, not 2020, May I 2000. Say, I was, I was yeah, sorry, I'm getting on my... Yes. Three yes. whole years right. ago. <laughs> So 2000 is what I meant to say. You can tell it's early in the morning in Australia. And the book I've got was May 2001. So this is before I even had children. And so the book was originally called Undercover Angel. Um, it's actually now published under Cindy Kirk. She's using that name for it. And that's the original. There was a time back in 2000 right. where... Cynthia Rutledge is what the yes. author name on it is. Okay. Yeah, so Cynthia Rutledge was the original name that was published under. It's now under Cindy Kirk is, it still is where you'll find it. Well? No, it's now no. called If I Belong With You. Okay. Yes, but I found the paperback. Of course, the print is so small. Small, I would need glasses to try and read that. Like it's oh. it's tiny, tiny. <laughs> and that's how I know that I read it a long time ago because I didn't need glasses to read that if I was reading a paper back then. But anyway, so it's effectively the same story, but it's just been revamped mm -hmm. and the clothes have been updated. I did reread the original a bit as well. So it's kind of a cross between Forbidden Love and 21 Jump Street. So I was a fan in the 80s of 21 Jump Street, the TV series. And Angel is an undercover police officer. She's in her, I think she's about 26, is her 28, somewhere around there. And she's a student in a high school in St. Louis in Missouri. And she's in there undercover because they've got the intel to say there's a drug ring that's operating out of this high school. So she's gone back to school. And um, the hero is Jake. He is Angel's history teacher and um, Angel's in his class. But I will clarify for people that are worried about the whole student teacher thing that Jake discovers her driver's license early in the story, works out that she's older than 18 so that he knows that they're a similar age. So when the romance starts to happen, it's not that awkward, oh, my goodness, is this a pedophilia situation? Okay, just to clarify, because I know people, yeah, 
and none of the problematic best- aspects of never been kissed with drew barrymore i love the movie but there are there are just a few moments where you're like she's in high school yeah yes and yeah. that's the thing and i think back in 2000 i don't think that was where our brains were in terms of thinking about stuff like this. I think, whereas now I think we're much more aware of these types of things. So it's not creepy. It's lovely. (laughs) Just to clarify that with the tropes. So this one has a mystery element. Of course, they're trying to work out what's going on with this drug ring. She doesn't know if he's involved. He knows that there's been issues in the school and they've had undercover cops in before and he doesn't know what she's doing there. So there's all that no one knows what's going on stuff happening there's a bit of light suspense I think Beth you'd like this one with the light suspense in it but it's very much a CCR there's nothing particularly scary that would keep you up at night so Valerie could also read it as well and the focus is on their relationship Um, I will say that it is it is high school and um, Angel's background herself she had a very rough upbringing and she plays that role very well because that's the She's basically walking in her shoes when she was 18. And there are some edgy elements in terms of drugs being discussed and being dealt and students running wild. But at the same time, there's a beautiful faith thread in this book. And there's a, a there's scenes in the book where you can just, where Jesus is very much there in this story. Now, don't I know you often see in Greece people will ask if someone is a Christian author. And I think that's quite it's I think it's the wrong question to ask because Cindy Kirk's other books are not like this book okay she mainly writes in the general market and she will write with different levels of heat in the general market so don't go rushing out thinking that Cindy Cindy Kirk is a Christian author for everything she absolutely writes this particular series was published with Love Inspired so it has all the ticks of approval of what you'd expect in a Love Inspired but that doesn't necessarily transfer to everything else she writes as well but I particularly enjoyed it it's book one in the series that's called it's got St Louis in the name I didn't actually write it down of course sweetheart sweet something in St Louis I had lots of s alliteration in it it was very cool (laughs) as if I can't remember it yeah but it's a lovely series and I'm I don't know if the books that are coming up after this one are also former love inspired books that have been revamped and rewritten but I would definitely read more in the series because I really enjoyed it and it was just so much fun to read a book that I read 20 something years ago reread it and I read it within a in an afternoon I was 180 something pages so sit down read it through and it was just really fun and I just really enjoyed it that's cool when you reread something and you still love it yeah, yes. that isn't always the case. Sometimes I read something and I'm like, reread something that I loved a long time ago. And I'm like, wow, will this author ever get to the point? Or how many pages of description are we reading? <laughs> and so it isn't yeah. always the case where you're like, yeah, I still really love this story. So it's cool. Yeah. So If I Belong With You by Cindy Kirk. Okay. Valerie? So in Missouri, I'm going to go with Sally Bayless and her Abundance series starting with Love at Sunset Lake. I love the whole series. And I probably love the whole series because I love the first book. Yeah, it's probably reasonable to say. Uh, In the first book, Tess is a struggling caterer. So when her great aunt dies and leaves her the lake house, she plans to sell it to a developer and save her catering business. But then she meets Jack, a wildlife artist who lives on the lake And he is fighting to keep developers away to save the wetlands where he finds inspiration. They both have really good reasons for what they want, for what they're doing. Um, But as you know, they can't both have what they want, right? Yeah. So as they spend time getting to know one another and he shows her his favorite places and why they matter to him and all that, they fall in love and it's so sweet. And of course, they have to resolve things. But yeah, that whole Abundance series um, was what put Sally Bayless on my radar to start with. And um, can't go wrong, in my opinion. Yeah. No, agree. All right. So I think we would be remiss if we went to Missouri and did not mention Carol Mancato. Yes. <laughs> um, and so I chose for that, although you have a plethora of books to choose from with Carol that are set in Missouri. Um, if you're not in one of her made up royalty lands, you are in Missouri with her books generally. Um, land, Missouri. Yes. 
Um, and so I chose The Lifeguard, The New Guy, and Frozen Custard, which is the first book in, um, I didn't write down the series name, but it's, it's, um, it's a novella series as I, I believe it is a novella series and, mm. um, it's got mostly lifeguards. It has this whole series centers around the pool and the summer and the lifeguards, um, and a lot of ice cream, which is always good. Um, and I just really enjoy, um, you get some of the returning characters from her other series who have big summer mansions or whatever, you know, um, and, and, and so I love seeing the incorporation of those other books with just this sort of fun, normal person, summer romance at the swimming pool. Um, it was, it was a fun little. I agree. That was a fun series. Yeah. Yeah. I read that a while ago. Yeah. Yeah, It is older again. Um, but, but when I thought of Missouri, I was like, well, we got to mention Carol. So this, and I forgot, (laughs) I forgot it was Missouri, but there you go. Although I should have joined the dots on that one. It's okay. Yeah. This is, this might be (laughs) as much as I like, like Carol's books in general, this, this might be my favorite of hers. Um, either this one or, um, the very first one I read of hers, which I think might be her very first book, was Finding, um, Mr. Finding Wright. Mr. Wright. Yeah. I really the did. one based on the writing conference? Yeah. The writing conference book? Yeah. 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 Which also, I think they end up in Missouri after the conference. I think they go back to Missouri. So it would work too if you need it. <laughs> <laughs> but like you said, if they're not um, royalty romance set in her made up lands, then they're anchored in mm-hmm. Serenity Landing, Missouri. So yep. Yep. You got another one, Narelle? I do. And this is a book that I have talked about before, which is One Perfect Spring by Irene Hannon. So if you go back to episode 69, when we talked about spring themed romances, then you can find out a little bit more. Um, Claire is a single mum school teacher who has an adorable 11 year old um, called Haley, and she was just adorable in this book. And they have a next door neighbour who's recovering from cancer. And so a little 11 year old decides to write a letter to a charity foundation, which is owned by a construction company, asking for their for help for the neighbour to be reunited with the son that she gave away and was adopted out. So that is what brings the hero and the heroine together. So the heroine is her mum, obviously, and then the hero is an executive part of the family business in the construction company who lands with this letter from the 11 year old and this one also has a second romance because we have the neighbor Maureen who is a academic who she's the one that had cancer um there's someone at work as well that she has a a romance with a history professor so I always love those double romance books Mm -hmm. they make my heart very happy (laughs) I get a double dose. A double dose of romance is always good. And it was a really emotional story. This one will pull on your heartstrings. Um, It has a lot of, deals with a lot of big issues as well that relate to those things, particularly if you've got someone who's given up a child for, I mean, there's a a range of reasons as to why that can happen. And so that gets explored in the story as well. And cancer is obviously a part of the story. So there could be some, if you've got some sensitivities around those things, then there's your trigger warning for you but I really I thought it was I mean Irene Hannon will do those sort of deep those really beautiful deep stories and so this is another winner from her just what's the title again one perfect spring now it's it's a book that was released a while ago and then they've got an updated well it's familiar but I'm not sure yeah. probably at least 10 years okay. probably it's probably is a 10 year old book or very close and then they did an encore edition so they re-released it and repackaged it I can't remember whether the publisher did that or whether she did it herself but that's I don't it could have been a reprint from them I'm not sure I associate her more with suspense not even romantic suspense but just straight up suspense I feel yeah, like she's she got quite, she's got several full-on CCR series okay. I really enjoyed her Starfish Bay series set in California yeah. that's right and now and her Hope Harbor series set in Oregon is on yes the I've got yes quite a few of those in audio so I'm working through them in audio cool yeah when, I love the Oregon books yeah cool and yeah there's they're not suspense okay well, I mean there's weird happenings occasionally but just it's just part of just plot part of the plot yep to make it so it's a, not boring 
Is that a puppy I can see in the background? That is, that, that's Darby. He's making oh, Dobby's puppy. making an appearance. Yay. Yeah. Yay for Dobby. <laughs> Dobby. <laughs> All right, did anybody else have another book? That's all I wrote um, down. Excellent. excellent. I'm um, done. I could have gone on with Missouri. Missouri, I could have probably <laughs> pulled out a lot more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, um, thank you all for joining us. We'd love to know if you've read any of these or if you have a better, another additional book to add to any of these states. Um, let us know in the comments. The uh, back to school giveaway is still ongoing on the blog over at inspiromance.com. So make sure you're stopping by every day to comment on the posts so that you get your entries and maybe win some cool stuff. Um, yes. Feel free to leave a comment on our YouTube channel, on our Facebook page, whatever makes you happy. And if you're over on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss an episode. And we will look forward to seeing you again next week. In the meantime, don't forget to fall in love with a good book. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>